164th contact. Friday, March 5, 1982, 118M. Billy says you really have it lately with the Fridays. Quetzal says it just turns out that way because the present work only allows that in each case, I can put aside more time on Fridays in order to carry on a conversation with you, while the rest of the days of the week only offer short rests, which I normally found in the center, but which, unfortunately, has been becoming more and more difficult for a long time. Billy says you should just take more time for that. Quetzal says it isn't because of that, for in the center itself, there are reasons for the fact that my rest becomes more and more difficult there and has already become almost an impossibility. Billy says you mean that the night watch participants have gotten better in their attention. Quetzal says no, the reason isn't to be found there, for the attentiveness of various ones and the devotion to duty, as always, leave much to be desired. Moreover, I have equipped my screening device with a new invention of mine, which I can program in each case for those on watch duty, according to which I, by the apparatus, automatically become invisible to the watch participants, together with my device, if they look in my direction. Billy says now something dawns on me some time ago, Engelbert told me that as he was coming from the garage, he saw a large figure in front of the barn which suddenly disappeared. Quetzal says that may be possible because I tested the device first, and it happened that at first, the sensors adapted themselves a bit sluggishly to the viewing vibrations, whereby they performed the necessary manipulation just half a second too late. Hence, it might be possible that Engelbert could observe me for a very short time. But in truth, the reason why rest becomes more and more impossible for me in the center doesn't lie with the watch participants. I am very sorry about this because the center has become a real home to me, and I truly feel very comfortable there. Billy says that pleases me tremendously, my friend, but now, I no longer understand why a stay in the center should become impossible for you. Quetzal says the reason doesn't lie with a group member. Billy says then probably foreign elements, which are not seen by the night watchers, must roam around. Quetzal says that is, indeed, the case every now and then, especially on the promontory and on the new road on the slope, for various watch participants do not fulfill their duty there, as well as not on the promontory where, incidentally, the defective fence becomes penetrated. Nevertheless, these strangers, who are sometimes well known to me, do not disturb me because I am also protected against them. They also cannot see me. Billy says then I understand nothing more at all. Tell me at last, where are the difficulties to be found? Quetzal says the difficulties are to be found in the vibrations. My device only works properly, in reference to the shielding of vibrations and their neutralization, if the group members of the watch, etc., are not approaching me in a closer range than 70 centimeters. But with a few group members, this distance is even further so around 6 meters, namely with Dorit, Thomas, and Margaret, while with Elsa, even a distance of more than 7 meters is given, which isn't surprising. However, because her meaning toward me is no less filled with strange hostility than it is toward you. A fact that she, nevertheless, will not admit, even though she does everything to let it be made known by scurrilous words against you and me, for she simply cannot take the truth, even though she could, if she would finally be honest to herself. All that, however, causes no difficulties for me, for I have constructed my device in such a way that upon the approaches of individual group members and according to their vibration areas that are dangerous for me, I am automatically removed from the danger zone by the device as soon as the persons concerned come closer to me than the safety threshold of 38 centimeters beyond the distance of the vibration measurement that is dangerous for me. The mechanical possibilities for such manipulations, however, lie in an area with a maximum of 9 meters, so I can, therefore, protect myself in this way up to this distance. If I would now find myself somewhere, where I have no exact overview, thus, I can't see a threat early on when someone approaches me, 
having vibrations that are dangerous for me and that are beyond the 9 meter distance, then it could be fatal for me. If I stand or sit somewhere and someone approaches me, whose danger limit for me is beyond the 9 meters mentioned, then everything would lead to a bad end. Billy says but you still have the alarm device that warns you about it when someone is within 500 meters. Quetzal says the stronger energies of my device make the function of this warning device impossible. Billy says but then, why does your bucket function with strangers when they standing on the promontory or on the new path, etc.? Quetzal says from a 14 meter radius from my person, an apparatus in my aircraft takes over the monitoring. If a corresponding warning arises, then this is transmitted to my carrying device, through which this enters into function without any time delay. But now, if someone moves in the circle between 9 and 14 meters around me and is dangerous for me in his vibrations in this 9 to 14 meter circle, then there is no protection but only mortal danger. Billy says but why do you leave this 4 or 5 meter circle open? You could. Nevertheless, also protect yourself for this distance, right? Quetzal says unfortunately no. For the time being, the possibility with a carrying device is still fully exhausted at 9 meters, in reference to its function. But after this distance, there must be a neutral ring of at least 4 meters, so that the energies and surveillance equipment of my aircraft can operate and work. If this safety belt didn't exist, then the energies of my carrying device and those of the ship would collide with each other or overflow into one another, through which a destruction of the equipment would come about. Billy says so no advantage without disadvantage. Quetzal says that is of correctness. We also have these problems. Billy says but I do not yet understand, who among us is a danger for you? You said yourself that the extreme danger of a little over 7 meters lies with our people. Quetzal says I told you, however, that someone else is present, who is to be reckoned as outside of the group members. Billy says I don't understand that. Quetzal says W. Billy says W. Quetzal says that is of correctness, and he is a constant and ever increasing danger for me. In the extreme case, he may only come 13 meters and 71 centimeters close to me. Closer than this mark, I run a great risk. Billy says that is puzzling to me. Quetzal says his sense toward us is not good, it is even strangely hostile and interspersed with thoughts that exhibit doubts regarding our actual existence. This also often comes to expression more in gatherings with his acquaintances and so-called friends but who are truly no friends to him. In addition to these facts is also the fact that he does rather strange things that are not rightful and that would have to be punished according to our terms and, by the way, also on the earth as corresponding regulations are given for this. But about this. I'll still have to tell you some things later in secrecy, which won't exactly be pleasing to you. However, these are not matters that fall within our direct area. What is objectionable to us is this we have also contributed our good part for your center and we also cherish the joy that we could feel at home there. This has actually so happened over time, not only with me, as also player, Patar and Semiaza as well as various others found the center as their home over time, according to which we stayed in there very often, though unobserved, especially at night time, when the vibrations of the group members are better. But for a long time, this has been prevented to us more and more by W and his acquaintances. For safety reasons for you and the center, as well as for the rest of the group members present there. The ordinal rule was issued that as of midnight, a watch is to be carried out until dawn, during which time no other persons should wander around any more in the open, except in special cases, as it was established in writing. But W adheres to this in no way because every night, he is to be found anywhere in the open, whereby in truth, he often pursues specific searches for you and us, which you designate with the term spying. 
Also, he often takes night trips with his motor vehicle, and sometimes, strange things happen even during the early morning hours between midnight and 4.00 am. And even though he isn't reckoned among the group members, I've made some findings concerning him in the last 12 months, which yielded rather unpleasant results. Thus, I also made the unpleasant finding that he is extremely unwilling to work and keeps himself away from a work commitment by various means and even falsehoods are used to justify himself. Even illnesses, etc. are pleaded by him, which only serve the purpose of keeping himself away from work. In this regard, I even observed him feigning an alleged illness during working hours, in order then, when it became night and the required work time was over, to become very lively and drive out into the night with his motor vehicle. This is absolutely incomprehensible to me because this is not a right and honest doing. In addition, a man at this age should have already developed his sense of duty and his honesty so far that he is obliged to a daily work. The parents should, therefore, let more sense of the enforcement of rights prevail in this respect, but not too great softness, as this is done, unfortunately, from a misunderstood sense of family. In our circle, we have discussed these issues in detail, and we concluded that a change and improvement can probably only be given to these grievances if the parents bring a degree of hardness to application, which can, nevertheless, lead to the fact that W leaves his parents' house, which would by no means be bad, for he would thereby force himself to cope with his life by his own initiative. His current wrongdoing, however, lets the danger be seen that he, in such an ongoing case, would still commit even greater abuses which could lead him into the provisions of the earthly laws and into the judge's premises. This was explained as a warning to the parents, if they don't immediately take the necessary changes. Hence, it shouldn't be seen as a remonstrance or the like but only as an admonition and guidance. Billy says both parents won't exactly be delighted about this. And how does it stand in general with W, with respect to the group reception? Quetzal says it won't be pleasant for the two of them but we cherish the expectation that they will understand my and our admonition and will understand that it solely concerns well-meant advice and the given facts. We expect, however, that at least the abuses of the night excursions, visits, and the searches for you and for us will be prevented from now on. We truly don't want to do without the center and want to be able to move about there freely. On the other hand, it is also a need for us to be in the vicinity of the group members living there even if only at a distance and from time to time. We feel a certain comradely attachment to all the group members even with Elsa and two others who are not friendly or loving-minded toward us. But concerning a reception of W as a group member the following is to be explained formally, as another personality, he was, indeed, a distant member of a group under your leadership, but in his present life thus far, it has arisen, through all sorts of negative changes, etc., that for the time being, no such thought may be entertained. First, he would truly have to recognize the truth and fulfill his duties, but this will still require many years of time. Billy says that is unpleasant. Quetzal says but unfortunately, it isn't to change. Billy says can we leave this subject now? Quetzal says I have no further explanations to give. Billy says that reassures me. It would be a little more gratifying if you could exactly explain to me again how things are now with this big dark cloud that moves high above the earth, as you briefly indicated to me last Monday afternoon. Quetzal says as you wish. Billy says yes, but something else just came to me somehow, it seems to be illogical to me concerning W, that you can't shield yourself against him. I think that beyond the 14 meter limit, your apparatus is in the spaceship react, through which you will be taken out of danger. Quetzal says unfortunately, that is impossible because in regards to W, I must store him programmatically in my apparatuses and devices according to which he doesn't fall within the range of the warning of strangers. But if I would store him as a stranger, then he would be removed from the closeness warning. Unfortunately, 
These devices can't be constructed differently, at least not for the time being. Billy says now I understand. Then tell me now, what the case is with the dark cloud. Quetzal says this dust cloud formation moves in a wavering height, between 17,30 and 23,30 meters of altitude around the Earth. It doesn't come from the Earth itself but from an active volcano on the moon Io, which orbits around Jupiter. There was a very violent eruption, which now dates back more than 2,990 years and which flung enormous amounts of ash dust into outer space. As a huge cloud, this ash dust drifted through space for many years, where it slowly but steadily approached Earth's orbit. 64 days ago, it had gone so far that the cloud drifted directly into Earth's orbit, just as the Earth itself also glided into the same point. Thus, the cloud of ash dust was captured by the forces of the Earth in circles since then at the aforementioned height around the Earth. Billy says this cloud was found in the meantime by scientists, it was, at any rate, in the newspaper. But it seemed to take a little while before they could find the thing, and that only happened by a coincidence. Moreover, the scientists think that the cloud is a product that comes from an earthly and unobserved volcanic eruption. Quetzal says that is absurd because the earthly monitoring instruments of seismology alone would have recorded such enormous volcanic activity. Such an absurd supposition is, therefore, senseless. Billy says I think so, too, but what the heck the earth scientists have always had a suitable excuse at hand. Quetzal says unfortunately, that usually results from a lack of understanding. This fact is known to us very well. But now, it is about that time for me again. But before I go, I again have to address some concerns that are of importance. Concerning Ingrid, I thoroughly strove for everything again, according to which I must explain that my words from last Friday aren't to be judged as mildly as what is done. My words are meant very seriously, and a part of her being actually corresponds to those descriptions, which I brought into use. This also arises in relation to the treatment of her children, whom she often aggressively concerns and reprimands with unnecessarily loud words and reproaches. Also in reference to her work ethic and willingness to work, I have exercised analytical activities, and I have to recognize that in these matters, she is too easily entrenched behind her erroneous nature of womanhood. Also this error should be corrected by her and she must also fix certain wrong ideas that prevent her from engaging in an authoritative activity. Furthermore, the time also begins for her, like also for Elizabeth, with the date of the 6th of March, in which she has to adapt herself into the duties in accordance with the regulations, statutes and the ordinal rules as well as house rules. This means that the monthly eight-hour work requirement must be fulfilled as well as the maintaining of the night watch, where the latter falls into the determination area of Eva, who regulates this activity. In this regard, concerning the night watch, I had, moreover, declared some time ago that an inspection must be carried out because this duty is neglected by various group members. This inspection must now be introduced, and it must also be ensured that the necessary patrols actually take place and that those on watch duty don't simply spend their watch time in the kitchen or in their rooms. If the inspector finds further misconduct in those on watch duty, then these have to be punished in accordance with the statutes. But now, to conclude the matters concerning Ingrid. It is still to be mentioned that it also applies to her that with longer stays at the center, in each case, she has to be involved in all daily resulting works, as the people responsible for this determine. This is also valid for the journey days, and for her, a time of 60 minutes may be granted up to the beginning of work, because of the children. The same regulation is also valid for Elizabeth. Regarding Ferdinand, I now have to explain that I have clearly established in the meantime that several of his wrong actions, without a doubt, trace back to the fact that Ingrid animates him to do such or even impels him to do such in an excessively commanding fashion. This does, of course, change some things in favor of Ferdinand, 
who is truly making much more effort to act rightfully than what superficial impressions first suggested before I found out that Ingrid was often the driving force behind the evil. So you can inform him that as a result of the wrong actions in reference to the mission, much has been shown to be revoked, so I am personally trying hard, and indeed on my own responsibility to helpfully assist him according to the best of means. I'm doing this, in particular, because I could personally experience with him that he is truly of the best intentions to exert himself in all interests, which he also reveals by his works, as you also explained to me and, thus, are very satisfied. To these facts, we must be responsive and show consideration, and therefore we must also helpfully assist him in his efforts. Billy says man, man, this pleases me tremendously. I've had serious thoughts about this in recent days. Quetzal says that is known to me, but now, my time is really scarce. Billy says then you just go, you rabble rouser. By then, and let everyone be greeted rather nicely by me and all group members. Quetzal says the joy will be theirs. Till we meet again I will probably already visit you again on Saturday or Sunday. Billy says bye. The end.